All right, we're going to talk about commas today, one of the most difficult punctuation marks to use correctly because there are so many rules and because everybody misuses commas so frequently that we see misuse almost as often as we see commas correctly used. So it can really uh, throw us for a loop. So we're going to go over the 11 comma rules today. Just before we get started, um, some people think commas aren't very important, but they are actually very important uh, because they can significantly change the meaning of a sentence by being included incorrectly, not being included when needed, or being put in the wrong place. So here are some examples. Um, on the top <clears throat> left-hand corner here, we have um, stop clubbing baby seals. And without the comma, you're saying we should not club baby seals, right? Um, but if you add a comma between clubbing and baby, um, that turns baby seals into a direct address. So you're telling baby seals to not go clubbing anymore. Uh, top right, we've got let's eat grandpa versus let's eat comma grandpa. And the top one is actually uh, encouraging cannibalism, saying, hey, let's eat this person, versus the bottom one saying, let's eat grandpa, uh, is saying a direct address to grandpa, let's eat. Right? So correct punctuation can save lives. At the bottom, uh, an actual example of a ER reason for visit chart, and uh, somebody wrote, unable to eat, and they were supposed to have a comma or some sort of dividing, um, you know, punctuation mark before saying the second uh, symptom, which was diarrhea. Without it, it looks like the person is unable to eat something they shouldn't be eating anyway. And on the lower right, we have a magazine cover, uh, Tales magazine cover, so it's a professional magazine, and it is... Um, an incorrect use, missing uh, commas here. So they have eat, ray, love with commas, which is fine. Uh, but then when they have uh, the subtitle below that, Rachel Ray finds inspiration in cooking her family and her dog. Without commas after cooking and her family, the magazine is suggesting that she cooks her family and her dog, which hopefully is not true, right? All right, so comma rule number one is when we're joining independent clauses together or full sentences. And you do this with a comma and one of the fanboys conjunctions. So remember uh, the coordinating conjunctions uh, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. And that allows you to put two sentences together. So one full sentence, comma, and, or a different fanboys conjunction, and then another full sentence. So we have here, Ricky likes boating on the weekends, comma, so, Shirley wants a divorce. All the kids are playing freely in the park, comma, but the dog needs to stay on a leash. Uh, so this is a way for you to show that the two sentences are related or sometimes that there's causality between them. Uh, one thing is causing another or one thing is uh, preventing another, etc. with choosing the correct uh, fanboy uh, conjunction for the situation. So just make sure you're using uh, the right one to get your meaning across. So let's do a little bit of practice here. So we have two sentences that need a comma or two. Not going to give that away somewhere. So Julie will graduate this semester, so she needs to work hard to pass all of her classes. And we need to put a conjunct or a <clears throat> put a comma between the coordinating conjunction so and the word semester. The second example is important to maintain a good GPA for ultimate success in college and career, but GPA is also an important criteria in financial aid eligibility. Now this one's a little bit tougher because you have more than one of the fanboys conjunctions, right? So you have and, and you have but, and you have for in here. Um, so just looking at that isn't going to tell you where to put the comma. So remember, you're looking for a full sentence on either side, and the first full sentence is everything up to career or through career, and then the second full sentence would be GPA is also an important uh, criteria in financial aid eligibility. 
So no commas before the other fanboys conjunctions, just before the word but. All right, comma rule number two. We have introductory dependent clauses that need to be set off from the rest of the sentence if they come at the beginning of the sentence and not at the end of the sentence. So for example, when you have when the host came to the table with bread, comma, my nephew put it in his coat pocket and asked for more, you can see that the uh, dependent clause is at the beginning and the independent clause or full sentence is at the end. Um, and you can also double check that by looking for the coordinate or the subordinating conjunction at the beginning of the sentence. So when, because, or other subordinating conjunctions. However, if you flip the sentence construction and you put the dependent clause at the end after you have your independent clause, then you do not use a comma because the subordinating conjunction is acting like a conjunction between the two sentences. So for example, my nephew put the bread in his coat pocket and asked for more when the host came to the table with bread. Flip the other one, Lily decided to wear her fairy wings because they didn't fit in her backpack. So it's important to remember the dependent clause has to come first to require a comma to set it off from the rest of the sentence. So a little bit of practice here. Number one, because math is so challenging, I'm going to take a refresher course before taking the advanced courses. And because is a subordinating conjunction, and you have a dependent clause at the beginning, so you need a comma before the independent clause. Number two, everyone should go down to the shelter areas at 2 p.m. because there will be a tornado drill. And in this example, we do not need a comma because you have the independent clause first, the subordinating conjunction is in the middle and connecting the last uh, dependent clause here because there will be a tornado drill. So no comma for that one. Number three, the winter is technically over. People are still wearing their winter coats. Though is a subordinating conjunction at the beginning, forming a dependent clause coming before the independent clause. So yes, you do need a comma. Number four, the driver pulled to the side of the road after he noticed a flat tire. You have the independent clause first, the driver pulled to the side of the road, subordinating con uh, conjunction is in the middle, the word after, and then forming a dependent clause after he noticed the flat tire. Just flipping that around, after the driver noticed the flat tire, comma, he pulled to the side of the road. So you can see how just um, subverting the structure, flipping it around, would create the need for a comma. Comma rule number three is uh, using a comma to set off introductory phrases. So this is similar to, to comma rule number two, but instead of a dependent clause, you're using this with a prepositional or verbal phrase. So a prepositional phrase will start with a preposition, at, to, of, etc. A verbal phrase uses a verbal at the beginning, so like the verb run, when you add an ing, it becomes a verbal, so a verb that has ing in it. All right, so some examples. At the end of the month, comma, I need to pay my bills. To people in the neighborhood, comma, Johnny is a suspicious character. Running quickly, <clears throat> uh, Jimmy tripped on a branch. To become a movie star, comma, you have to be willing to give up your normal life. Now notice in those cases, the prepositional and verbal phrase is at the beginning of the sentence, so you, do, you need a comma there. Um, if you put it at the end of the sentence after the, introdu or the independent clause, uh, then you do not use a comma and you let the preposition or the verbal uh, connect the two. So for example, I need to pay my bills at the end of the month. Johnny is a suspicious character to people in my neighborhood. So no comma when you're putting the phrases at the end. All right, a little practice here. Uh, number one, skiing down the hill, I almost ran into the tree and the verbal skiing is coming first, so we do need a comma. 
Number two, at the start of the semester, students should make sure they have modified their schedule so that they have time for all of their coursework. Then you have at the start of the semester, prepositional phrase at. Number three, students should revamp their schedules at the start of the semester. Here you're starting with a noun, so not a verbal, uh, not a prepositional phrase, so no comma needed. Number four, nursing students shouldn't try to make more than, take more than a full course load. Um, and in this case, nursing is not a verbal, it's actually um, an adjective. So what type of students, and you're saying uh, nursing students. So no comma there. And then number five, to get ahead, study hard. You do have a comma because you have the prepositional phrase to get ahead. Um, and study hard is actually missing the implied you. So in reality, it would be saying you study hard. Uh, and then if you had flipped the phrasing around, you study hard to get ahead would not need a comma. But because we've subverted it, it needs one. All right, rule number four uh, would be using a comma with transitional words or conjunctive adverbs. So use commas after, before, or around those words, depending on where they're located in the sentence. If it's at the beginning, you use a comma after the word. If the word is in the middle, you'll need commas to offset around the word. And if it's at the end of the sentence, you'll have a comma coming before the word. So some transitional uh, words, phrases, and uh, conjunctive adverbs here. Furthermore, comma, we should never drink Monster Energy drinks. One exception, however, is when we are in writing class. And you can see how this is really flexible. I could put however at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end of the sentence. And wherever that word occurs is where we need the comma. So one exception is when we are in writing class, comma, however. Nevertheless, Bill drinks them in math class too. So nevertheless being our um, transitional word. However, if you have two sentences being connected with a transitional word or conjunctive adverb, uh, make sure you use a semicolon or a period um, in between those two sentences uh, instead of having a comma on either side. So sometimes he drinks too many energy drinks, period, or semicolon. Consequently, comma, he often feels ill. All right, so practice for this. Number one, however, when winter comes late, John is able to take on more construction work before the end of the year. So you have the uh, transitional word, however, and when winter comes late <laughs> also needs a comma there. Uh, number two, when winter comes late, however, because the word however is in the middle, we need a comma on either side of it. And number three, working out can help one slim down. Nevertheless, its most important value is to keep people healthy. So you've got two full sentences there. Working out can help keep one or can help one slim down. Period. Nevertheless, its most important value is to uh, keep people healthy. Another full sentence. So you need either a period or a comma, or sorry, period or a semicolon in between um, the first sentence and the second sentence, and then a comma after the word nevertheless. All right, comma rule number five is an easy one for most people. You need to put a comma in between items on a list when there are three or more items in that list. Most people are like, yup, got this, uh, very familiar with this rule. The only thing that gets debated is whether or not you need an, a comma between the items, uh, the last and second to last items on the list. Uh, some people say you do need a comma, and they call that the Oxford comma. Some people say you do not need a comma there. So here's an example, Oxford comma here, Oxford comma here, Oxford comma here, coming before the and and the last item on the list. According to the rules of grammar, you do need an Oxford comma 
between those last two items. And it has to do with clarifying how many items are on your list. Um, and there are situations where it can really confuse the meaning of a sentence. Uh, so for example, John eats Cheerios for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You need two commas because there's three items in that list. Uh, for the party, pre <clears throat> please bring pop, macaroni, chips, and cookies. You've got four items on that list, so you need three commas separating those items. Okay. The one exception is if you are using items for a list that already contain a comma. So the best way to explain this is to think of naming cities and states or <clears throat> cities and countries. And if you have Paris, France, for example, Paris, France can be one item on your list, but it already has a comma in it. <clears throat> if that's the case, then you need to include a semicolon in between each item on the list just for clarity. Otherwise, it would be confusing what's an item versus the comma being used for another rule, etc. So we will travel to Paris, comma, France, semicolon, Dublin, comma, Ireland, semicolon, and Venice, comma, Italy. And you can get rid of the commas in most situations um, to try to avoid using semicolons in this way, but you usually lose some information. So, for example, if you said we will travel to France, comma, Ireland, comma, and Italy, you would not need to use semicolons, but you are losing the specificity of where in those countries you are going to. All right, and a little bit of practice here. So, number one, my niece plays the violin, piano, and guitar. Three items, so you need violin, comma, uh, piano, comma, and guitar. Number two, John has taken to skiing in the winter, running in the spring, and sailing in the summer. Three things that he's doing. So skiing in the winter, comma, running in the spring, comma, and sailing. Number three, the customer asked for a cheeseburger and french fries. In this case, you have only two items in the list, so you do not use any commas. You don't use commas until you have three items in the list. Number four, Bethany is working on her bachelor's degree in animal science in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Robert is, uh, just earned his associate's degree in accounting. And Tiffany will graduate in May with her bachelor's degree in nursing from Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. Now, there are three people being talked about, so we have three items in this list. However, a couple of them have uh, commas within those items. So Minneapolis, Minnesota, for example, needs a comma. So that means that we need semicolons in between Bethany, Robert, and Tiffany. And then Tiffany also needs a comma for Omaha, Nebraska. All right, comma rule number six. <clears throat> this is a kind of a tricky one because it's, you know, hard to determine sometimes if you actually have non-essential information or not. But if you have non-essential information or phrases, you need to offset that information from the rest of the sentence with commas. So if that information is at the beginning of the sentence, you would have a comma to set it off. Um, if it's at the end, you would have a comma coming before it to set it off from the rest of the sentence. Or if it's in the middle, like this example, you would have a comma on either side of that non-essential information. So for example, some PG-13 movies, comma, such as Anchorman, The Le Legend of Ron Burgundy, should really be R-rated. And this example, the phrase that's in red is non-essential information. You could take that example out and the sentence would still make sense uh, and be just fine the way it is. So some PG-13 movies should really be R-rated. Because you're interrupting the sentence to add an example, you need a comma on either side. Another example, the Minneapolis Chain of Lakes, which is a series of four connected lakes, is a fun place to canoe or kayak. Again, interrupting in the middle, so you need a comma on either side of that interrupting phrase. 
Rita, who is the oldest in the family, has a history of bossing people around. While Rita, you have a comma uh, after Rita and a comma before has, because it's non-essential information. It's interesting information, um, but non-essential to the meaning of the sentence. Um, however, if the information or phrasing really is essential to the meaning of the sentence, so your reader understands who or what you're talking about, you do not put commas around that phrase. So for example, the woman who works at the front desk is ill today. If you took out the information about where she works, who works at the front desk, you would just have the woman is ill today. And that's not very clear because who is this woman, right? There are, you know, almost four billion women on earth, so that's not very clear. Um, so in lieu of having that person's name or some other specific information, we have to say where she works to clearly communicate that information. So no commas around the phrase in that situation. All right, a little practice. Joe Miller, who works at the YMCA, is never happy to see anyone. So Joe Miller, specifically named person, we know who he is. He's never happy to see anyone. It is extra information for us to know that he works at the YMCA. So we put commas around that phrase of information. Rose did her best, which is all anyone could ask. The actual phrase or the actual sentence is Rose did her best. The phrase, which is any, which is all anyone could ask, is actually non-essential information, so you don't need that for communicating the actual sentence, so you put a comma to uh, separate it from the rest of the sentence. Number three, she spent her inheritance on a race car, I think. I think is not essential to that sentence, uh, so you would put a comma preceding it. Number four, that particular species of flower which blooms once a century is very expensive. And which blooms once a century is interesting information, but non-essential, so we put commas around it. All right, comma rule number seven, if you have a direct address of somebody, you use a comma uh, before, after, or around their name to make sure that they know you are addre uh, direct addressing that person. So for example, Julie, please pick up the mail. Julie is the person you're directly addressing, telling her to pick up the mail. So you have a comma setting off her name from the rest of the sentence. Where are you going for dinner, Charles? Again, same thing, directly addressing Charles, so you need a comma to set it off. The only difference here is that Julie was at the beginning of the sentence, so she had a comma after her name. Charles is at the end of the sentence, so you have a comma before his name. Do not use a comma when you are not directly talking to somebody or addressing them. When you're talking about them, you do not use a comma. So Julie should pick up the mail. You're talking about Julie, not to Julie. And a little bit of practice here. Number one, Jose, it's time to submit tax information. You're talking directly to Jose, so you need a comma to separate his name from the rest of the sentence. Number two, Rita should submit tax information now. You're not talking directly to Rita, so you do not use a comma in this situation. You're talking about her. Number three, where are you going, Mom? You are directly addressing your mom in this sentence, uh, so you do need a comma separating the name mom from the rest of the sentence. And number four, Thomas, can you please help me, or can you help me please? <laughs> Thomas uh, is being directly addressed, so you need a comma, and then you also need a comma to set off please, which is a non-essential phrase, but it's very nice to include. Number eight would be uh, using a comma to offset quotes or paraphrasing. So you would use a comma before and or after a signal phrase or speech tag. So for example, according to Dr. Martinez, comma, kids should be our first priority. 
So here he's being paraphrased, but if it were in quotation marks, it would look the same way, just with quotation marks. Uh, and that would be his exact wording versus us paraphrasing what he said. Uh, another one, Smith claimed, comma, quote, people often don't understand true repercussions until they come into play. So we're quoting Smith exactly there. And we have a speech tag that he claimed this. I forgot to feed the cat last night, Julie said. And we need a comma coming before the quotation mark here uh, and the speech tag. And then uh, this is more for creative writing than academic writing or professional writing. Uh, you can put the speech tag in between uh, quote if you want to like add drama <laughs> or heighten uh, suspense. Uh, and what you can do then is have part of the quote, the greatest day of my life, comma, have the speech tag, Tina exclaimed, comma, rest of the quote was when I went to Disney World. And it's a little awkward, uh, and we don't usually use it for academic or professional writing, but you'll see it all the time in creative writing for stylistic purposes. Uh, do not use a comma when you are signaling indirect dialogue or paraphrase. <clears throat> so this is you um, talking about them rather than paraphrasing them directly. And you'll notice that often the word that is being used, so that is replacing the comma. Dr. Martinez said that kids should be our first priority. Um, sometimes you do not need the word that. Rex told me that he loves uh, being a nurse. Uh, Julie said that she forgot to feed the cat last night. All right, so a little bit of practice here. According to Dr. Phil, we should not send children to bed hungry when they misbehave. We have a signal phrase according to Dr. Frill, <coughs> Phil, and then we're paraphrasing what he said, so we do need a comma. Dr. Ruth said, speech tag, so you have a comma, uh, quote, kids need to learn somehow, but not by starvation. Uh, number three, I was told, in quotes, the little boy whispered, quote, to never go near that house again. So this would be the creative writing example. You have a comma around the front and the end of that speech tag. And then the last one, psychologists suggest uh, that we tend to fear what we do not understand. Uh, you have the word that replacing the comma. All right, comma rule number nine is used with dates and addresses. So most people understand this pretty well. Uh, very rarely are there um, incorrect uses for this. So you need to separate days and years with a comma. So the package needs to be delivered by May 26th, comma, 2018. And a way to look at that is that you have a month, a smaller unit of time, a day, next to the longest unit of time, a year. So the day and the year should not be next to each other. If you are writing the date uh, for most countries outside of the U.S., they actually flip it and say 26 May uh, of 2018, and in which case you do not need a comma because it's in order. Smallest amount of time, middle unit of time, largest unit of time. But, you know, in the U.S. we like to not follow <laughs> what other people are doing. Uh, separate, days of, uh, separate days of the week and months with a comma. So if you need to identify what day of the week this date is, you have the day of the week, comma, and then the month, day, etc. So Friday, comma, September 5th. You also need to separate streets and cities and states, but not zip codes, uh, with commas. So please send the package to 123 West 21st Street, comma, Columbia Heights, comma, Minnesota, and no comma between Minnesota and the zip code. A shorter example, Finn moved to Chicago, comma, Illinois, to take a job in veterinary medicine. A little bit of practice. Number one, the books need to be delivered to 133 Eagle Lane, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55407, on Tuesday, August 30th, 2018. So we have a street that needs to be separated from the city, 
We have a city that needs to be separated from a state, and we have a day of the week that needs to be separated from the month, <laughs> and a day of the month that needs to be separated from the year. So lots of commas in that one. Number two, I hope to go to Paris, France when I graduate from college in May 2020. So you need a comma between Paris and France, a city and a state, or a city and a country. But you do not need a comma between May 2020 because that is the appropriate unit of time. Right. So those can be next to each other. Number three, Shauna needs a ride to Montana in July 2019. No commas needed because Monta uh, Montana is alone, no city specified, um, and July month can be next to the year uh, with no comma. I was born on September 1st, 2001 at St. Mary's Hospital in Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, you need a comma between September 1st and 2001. You also need a comma after the year. Um, this is something we don't do very frequently anymore. This is how language changes. But technically, if you provide a full date, you should have a comma after that full date before completing the rest of the sentence. Um, but if you don't, most people don't even notice anymore. At St. Mary's Hospital in Rochester, Minnesota. Second to last rule, comma rule number 10. This one is a tricky one because it's uh, used with adjectives and most people either aren't aware of this or don't care or don't pay attention. But when you have two or more adjectives describing a noun, you need to put a comma between the adjectives if they are not cumulative, so if they don't build on each other. So for example, you can have a house that is run down and the color green, and those aren't building on each other. Green does not depend on it being run down, and being run down does not depend on the house being green. So you put a comma in between uh, those two adjectives. An example of the opposite where you don't need a comma would be German chocolate cake. German chocolate is one specific type of cake, so they depend on each other to describe that noun, so you do not have a comma there. It's hard for people to remember that, so most people use one or two of these tests to determine if they need a comma between adjectives. The first test is if you can put the word and between the two adjectives. If you can, you have two choices. You can put a comma in between the two adjectives, or you can just leave the word and there if you want. The other test is to switch the order of the adjectives. If you can switch the order of the adjectives and still have them make sense uh, in the order, the opposite order, then you, can, you have to put a comma between them. Or you could put the word and between them, again, choices. So some examples here of needing a comma or the word and. The rundown comma greenhouse on the corner needs a lot of repair. An example of testing that, can you flip the order? Can you say the green rundown house on the corner? Yes, you can. Also another test you can do, can you put an and there? The green and rundown house on the corner? Yes, you can. So either put an and there or put the comma. Here's how a comma switches um, the meaning a little bit. So you can say the small comma light blue box is ready for delivery. What you're saying there is you have a small box that is light blue in color. Nothing about weight is included in this sentence. However, if you say the small comma light comma blue box is ready for delivery, you're saying there's a small box that is light in weight and is blue in color some color blue, navy, whatever. Okay, so that's what one little comma can do to change the meaning of your sentence. And again, a couple examples of where not to use commas because they're cumulative. The German chocolate cake is sitting on the counter. So you cannot say the chocolate German cake, right? And you can't say the German and chocolate cake. So do not use a comma. Another example, her bright red shoes look like Dorothy's in The Wizard of Oz. You cannot say her red bright shoes, because that doesn't make sense. 
And you cannot say her bright and red shoes because we don't mean they're like flashing lights, right? We mean that the color red is bright. So no comma there. A little bit of practice. Number one, the rusty old Mustang needs to be removed from the backyard. So rusty and old are two adjectives. Mustang is the noun. I'm assuming it's a car and not a horse. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, so you need to decide. I've got two adjectives. Do they need a comma or not? And the answer is yes, because you could say the rusty and old Mustang, or you could flip the order and say the old rusty Mustang. So you do need a comma between them. Number two, the girl with the yellow teddy bear slept soundly at the airport. You have yellow and teddy, which are two adjectives, and your noun is the word bear. So you need to decide, can I flip the order? So can you say the teddy yellow bear? No, you cannot, right? And you can't say the yellow and teddy bear. <laughs> so in this case, these are building on each other. Teddy bear is, you know the noun essentially, um, and yellow is being used to describe what color the teddy bear is. <clears throat> Number three, because of its popularity, we will need to expand the overcrowded noisy trailer park. So overcrowded, noisy, and trailer are adjectives of the word park, but it's not just any park, it's a trailer park, so you would not have a comma between the word trailer and park. So you only need to decide, do we need a comma between overcrowded and noisy, and noisy and trailer? So, hmm. So can we switch noisy and overcrowded? Can you say the noisy, overcrowded trailer park? Yes. Could you put an and in there? Yes, overcrowded and noisy. Can you put, uh, so we do need a comma there. Can you put an and in between noisy and trailer? Noisy and trailer park. No. Can you flip the order and say trailer noisy park? No. So that is the only comma that is needed. All right, the last comma rule is the stylistic comma. This does not give you free license to throw commas wherever you want, but if a sentence is still confusing following all the other comma rules, it is still confusing to the reader, you may put a comma where needed to clarify the meaning of the sentence. So this is, you know, rather rare. It doesn't give you license to throw commas all, the, all over the place and say, stylistic comma. Uh, so for example, uh, these sentences do not easily make sense to readers unless you add a pause provided by a comma. So for example, kicking the child was carried off to bed. Like, um, excuse me, are we talking about kicking a child here? No, we're saying the child is kicking, <laughs> so we need a comma there. Kicking, the child was carried off to bed. Or you could just rewrite the order of the sentence, which I think would be better, and say the child was carried off to bed while kicking, or something along those lines. Second example, John Russell Baker is the best columnist, or sorry, to John Russell Baker is the best columnist. Uh, what we're saying here is to John, the person, the columnist, Russell Baker, is the best columnist. The third example, when you can come and visit us, uh, when you can, comma, come and visit us. Without that comma there, it's confusing. Or you could just flip the order of the sentence and say, come and visit us when you can. Makes a lot more sense. And the last example, we surveyed the students in the class. Out of the 27 were married. What you're really saying is out of the 20 students, seven students were married. So you need a comma between the word 20 and the word seven.